uh, enters and how it's controlled, um, it's, it's, really qu it's quite different from anything else. It's really um, falling. And so we're doing a controlled fall. So with, with a rocket, you're actually trying to break um, as opposed to you're trying to create drag instead of lift. It's, it's really the opposite of an aircraft. You want the most amount of drag that you can produce. Um, and you want some lift, especially when you're in the upper atmosphere, mostly so that you don't, you can control the maximum heating rate. Um, you want enough lift to keep yourself high in the, the low density portion of the atmosphere so you can, you can, you can burn off velocity. And, and then, uh, so you want, and, and, but, the, but then, you know, basically it goes like, if, if, this, is the, if this is the Earth, it goes, it goes at about a 60 degree, <laughs> my hand is the rocket, <laughs> it, it's, it's going at about 60 degrees, um, so when, when in orbit, you're, you're actually going at around 25 times the speed of sound, horizontal to the ground. So this is a, a very important concept that is counterintuitive to our normal daily life. Um, being in orbit, being in zero G, is not about altitude, it's about velocity. How fast are you going um, ho uh, horizontally? <laughs> this doesn't, um, so when, when something's in orbit, it's zooming around the Earth so fast that the outward acceleration, outward radial acceleration is in, equal to the inward acceleration of gravity. And then you have zero gravity. This is why you actually have zero gravity. The space station, people often think the space station is stationary, but it's actually going around the world at 25 times the speed of sound or about 17,000 miles an hour. The, it, look, it, it always looks stationary in the pictures. Um, and since there's no air, you don't have to have a, um, an aerodynamic structure. So you can be a totally crazy structure that, that doesn't look like it should be able to go 25 times the speed of sound, but it does. Um, and you can only feel acceleration. You can't feel velocity. So people sometimes like to wonder, what does it feel like to go 25 times the speed of sound? Actually, it feels like nothing. Um, only accelerating to there feels like something. So, so, the, so, the, so Starship is coming in. This, is the, if this, this platform is the Earth. It's coming in at, at hypersonic velocity like this, sort of at, at around a 60 degree angle. So it comes like this and then it starts falling, and then it just falls like a skydiver. And it's just controlling itself, and then it, it turns and lands, like that. So, it was, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's incredibly elaborate explanation. Um, and then you can get a sense for it, this is much better. <laughs> there you go, see, same thing. <laughs> Look better with the hand? Okay. <laughs> But it'll look totally nuts to see that thing land. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy, wow. Um, so, uh, cool, so let's see, talking about uh, the, the Raptor engine. Um, so there's, uh, there's, there's, the ship will have a total of six engines, uh, three um, of the sea level variety of, of Raptor, and those are actually on the rocket right now. So we have the three sea level, in fact, that's a picture of, of just inside that skirt, that's what it looks like. So we've got the th three um, sea level Raptor engines, and they, they gimbal, which, is, which means that the whole engine moves. So the way the rocket uh, steers is by moving the entire engine. So whereas an aircraft engine is static, and you, you move by moving like the control surfaces, like the air, uh, air, ailerons and rudder and elevator and flaps, this, um, in this, the rocket, when the, when the engines are powered, um, you move the entire engine to steer it. But so, so the Starship will have three uh, sea level uh, engines that move up to about 15 degrees uh, angle and three vacuum engines that are optimized for efficiency that will, be, um, that will not move. So they will be just fixed in place. Um, and that allows us to have the biggest bell nozzle for the, uh, for the, for, for the, for the vacuum Raptor engines. Um, and uh, the, aspirationally, the, the target is a, a 380 second ISP for the vacuum engine. But this is a very, in, in, in sort of, Space geek terms, this is like a really a great number. Um, and, and, and even for the, the steel engines to get over uh, th uh, a, a, a 350 second uh, ISP is also uh, really great. So, oh, actually, yeah, sorry. I'm looking at the slide, you're, you're not. So that's what I meant by it looks like that on the inside. Sorry, go back one side. That's the, that's the inside of the Starship right now. So that's what it looks like in the base. All right, uh, and then heat shield. So, um, 
Uh, we have we've gone through various iterations of heat shield. There's a lot of ways to, to uh, skin the cat here. Uh, the, ultimately, we decided to have uh, heat shield um, hexagonal tiles, uh, ceramic tiles that um, are, are, are basically a, are like a tiny glass vermicelli um, at a microstructure level. Um, so it's very, very light, but, but, but very um, crack resistant, uh, essentially uh, glass tiles. Um, and they're, it, because, because Starship is, an, is an, a steel construction, like, it, like at first it feels like, oh, it's steel, does that mean it's heavy? No, actually it's the lightest construction. This is, steel is the best thing, is the, I think the best, Thing about best design decision on, on this whole thing is a, a 301 stainless steel. Um, because at, at cryogenic temperatures, a 301 stainless actually has about the same effective strength as an advanced composite or aluminum lithium. Unlike most steels, which get brittle at low temperature, um, a 301 stainless gets much stronger. And if it's in the, in, the, in, the, in the extra hard condition, meaning it's cold rolled to extra hard condition, it also gets way stronger. So it gets, it's actually gets, it, it's, it, it's strength to weight ratio um, at, at cryogenic temperatures is, is equivalent or even perhaps slightly better than, than um, advanced composites or aluminum lithium. So this is, this is not well appreciated because if you just look at the materials manual and say like what, what is the strength of, of stainless steel, it, 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 it looks much weaker than it is. You say, what is the strength at cryogenic temperature? Oh, much, much stronger. Or, you know, at very low temperature, almost twice as strong. Um, that's when it becomes better than, than carbon fiber or, or, or aluminum lithium. And there's another benefit. It also has a high melting temperature. So for a reusable ship, you're coming in like a meteor. You want something that does not melt at a low temperature. You want something that melts at a high temperature. Um, and this is where steel is extremely good as well. Um, so it's, you know, steel ha has a melting temperature um, around sort of 1500 degrees centigrade, uh, whereas uh, aluminum, you, you know, maybe 300 or 400 degrees. Um, and same thing for carbon fiber, and that's really pushing it, you know. You, you, so th this is ha having that much higher melting temperature means that you don't need any shielding on the, the leeward side of the, of the ship when it comes in for entry. And, and the shielding you need on the windward side, the hot side, is, is massively reduced because the, the, the thickness of the tile uh, is, is actually, for a reusable system, is dependent on what back shell temperature, like what, how hot does the back of the tile that interfaces with the airframe get. And because the steel can take a much higher temperature, your, your heat shield even on the windward side is much, is much lighter. The, the net effect is that a, 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 a 301 stainless steel rocket is actually the lightest possible reusable architecture. Then, then it comes come to cost. The, the carbon fiber we were using was $130 a ton. The steel is $2,500 a ton. Oh, sorry, sorry, two, two sorry. Yeah, 25, it's, it's, the, uh, the, sorry, the $130,000 a ton versus $2,500 a ton, that makes much more sense. So it was, it's $130,000 a ton for the carbon fiber and $2,500 a ton for the steel. So the steel is about 2% of the cost of the carbon fiber. So this is a good thing we changed from carbon fiber to steel, uh, by far. Uh, <laughs> it was, and, and the, very easy to weld stainless steel. The, the evidence being that we welded it outdoors without a factory. So, yeah, yeah. Great skills by the team, but with, with carbon fiber, this is impossible. With uh, aluminum lithium, also impossible. Uh, but steel is, very, is, is, is easy to weld and it is resilient to the elements. Um, and also, uh, actually, uh, as, as uh, talking with Austin earlier, he was saying, like, on, on Mars, you, you can, like, cut that up, you can weld it, you can modify it, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. 
You're, you're in, out there on the moon or Mars, you, you want something that you can modify, that you can cut up and use for other things. That's like for sure a great thing. So anyway, steel, I, obviously I'm in love with steel. It's, uh, you know, it's time, uh, yeah, I yeah, had to say it, you know. So great, so let's see, uh, going on to the booster. So the, the booster is designed to take up to 37 Raptor engines. I'm not sure if we'll go that high, but you can really um, you know, have a 31. I think like the minimum number you'd want is you know, maybe around 24. Um, but the, the booster is, is designed to be able to take uh, multiple engines out. So you can actually add or subtract engines as you'd like. You basically just need a lot of force pushing up. Um, over time, I think the pro you probably want around a 7,500 uh, ton force uh, rocket, um, which is about twice the thrust of a Saturn V, a little more than twice the thr thrust, um, and, uh, and, and on, on a roughly 5,000 ton uh, lift, lift off, gross liftoff mass. Uh, so for roughly one and a half uh, thrust to weight. Um, for a reusable rocket, you actually want a high thrust to weight rather than uh, it, with a, an expendable rocket where you want a low thrust to weight um, because a any thrust to weight below one is not useful. Like if you, if you, if you have less thrust than your weight, you don't move. Um, so you actually want a high thrust to weight for a reusable rocket. This is a, a very important um, design optimization change. Um, so, so that's why I think you know, more engines is probably good um, and, and getting up to around 7,500 tons uh, over time. Uh, and a one and a half to one one and a half thrust to weight ratio, uh, or more. So, and, and we're we think we're probably going to adjust the grid fin design to be kind of like a more of like a diamond shape. Um, it looks cooler. Uh, it works better too. <laughs> and then the the rear fins are actually just legs. So they're not um, they're not need, needed for stabilization or guidance. They're they're essentially uh, there for for legs. All right, so some, let's go into some of the development testing. So this is a Raptor firing. All right, and then uh, obviously we, we had a Raptor fire on uh, the Starhopper. Uh, yeah. Um, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, see, to appreciate scale, but it's the same diameter as uh, Starship. And obviously it's just right over there. So it, it's kind of hard to tell if it's the size of a trash can or uh, the, you know, how big it is. But it's, it's a, that, it's about the, the body diameter is about 30, 9 meters or 30 feet, not including the leg span. <laughs> so this, <laughs> this gives you a sense of, of size. Um, so the little pixels there—that's little little pixels are a human. Um, and then 
There's the hopper next to it, the Millennium Falcon for comparison. Um, then a Starship, which is what you see before you. And then that's what it look, will look like with the full stack, which is almost two and a half times as tall as this vehicle. This simulation will give you a sense of the, the scale of things. It slightly reminds me of the scene from Spaceballs. So, yeah, so uh, there, a rapidly reusable orbital launcher or rocket is, it says a rapidly reusable rocket is required for <laughs> alliteration, um, for, um, achieve, for, for getting a breakthrough in, in cost of access to space, that you don't throw the rockets away every, every flight. But an, another key step is refilling on orbit so that uh, a Starship can get to orbit with, let's say, 150 tons of, of payload for the moon or Mars or beyond. Um, and then uh, it can get tankered to fill up its propellant tanks and so that it, c it can depart from low Earth orbit with 1,200 tons of propellant. This is a very big thing so that your, um, your delta velocity is, is enough to transport 150, literally 150 tons to the surface of the moon or Mars. Um, with, with full reusability and orbital refilling, um, which is, is essentially, the orbital refilling is actually a simplified version of what SpaceX does in, in, in docking with the space station. So it's actually harder to dock with the space station than it is to do orbital refilling. But in practicing, in docking with the space station, um, SpaceX has, has also learned how to rendezvous and dock 
in orbit um, in, in a complex environment. So this is one of the other critical pieces of the puzzle um, needed, needed to establish a base on the moon and Mars, a, a city ultimately. Um, and yeah, so those, those are the critical ingredients. So we, we think it would be very exciting to have a base on the moon, um, e even if it's just a science base um, that, you know, we have, for example, we have a base uh, at, at Antarctica. Many, many countries have bases in Antarctica for science research, and this would be an incredible area of research. Um, so whether or not people want to live on the moon, there's definitely a lot of science to be done. Um, and uh, I think this is, it's close as well. Um, so that's, that would be quite exciting to do. And then, of course, uh, we can go other, to other places in the solar system, like Saturn. Uh, and, uh, but the, the critical thing that we need to focus on, I think, is the fastest path to a self-sustaining city on Mars. This is the, this is the fundamental thing.